What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So, Monsters got a few buffs this patch, a lot of car or a few cards got reworked for Vampires, and it turns out, Vampires are actually really good. Like, they're really, really good. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting this whatsoever. I remember reviewing the changes to some of the Vampires, and I was like, eh, they might be okay. Uh, most people, it, it, it seems pretty underwhelming. But in play, they're insanely good. Uh, monsters are easily like high tier two, maybe tier one. I don't think they're tier one yet just because I think there needs to be a little bit more refinement, uh, but I've been having a lot of fun with them. Um, so I have two lists today. I'm going to show both of them. I'll probably have gameplay from both of them. Uh, the reason I have two lists is because of this card right here, Old Spirit Tip. Old Spirit Tip got a buff from uh, 15 to 14 provisions, which is really nice. Um, there's only one problem with this card, and that is, well... Uh, hyper thin nilf guard is starting to run invocation now and if they invocation your spear tip you basically lose uh, because you lose 12 points and they get plus 12 that's a lot that's a mass that game losing um, so I actually cut the card because hyper thin is going to see a ton of play and giving my opponent a 24 point swing really ideal so uh yeah maybe spear tip is unplayable this meta i'll still go through the list really quickly uh and then i'll show the other variant which is quite close uh when you compare the two side by side uh leader so you can give uh bleeding three times they do three uh three bleeds and then when the final take goes off you spawn an ekimara this card's really or this leader's really good especially with oriana which we'll get to in a second um yeah, it's just a fantastic leader i typically uh usually i win round one and i bleed round two no pun intended uh spear tip it's a nice power play but it might be a card that you have to drop because of invocation dandelion poet so this card got buffed by 2p uh and i've been experimenting with it and i actually like it i think it's pretty good um it works really well with nagelfar nagelfar puts two random gold cards from your deck uh you get to choose one play one and then the other one goes on top of your deck well poet plays a top card so what you can do is you can play nagelfar Pick whichever gold card you want, and then you can pull it into the other gold card, which normally you would either have to wait a turn, or if you're in round three, you would never see that gold card. Well, now you can. Um, on top of that, if you play Nagelfar and you hit Poet, you can play the Poet and then draw the other gold card that you saw uh, from the uh, the ship. So that's kind of cool. I'm not quite sure if it is correct, but I've been experimenting it, and I don't hate it. It's kind of cool. I like it. Uh, Karanthi Heatwave. I'm running the card because hyper thin is a thing and you need tall removal. If you don't have any form of tall removal, you're going to lose to hyper thin. Assuming the player knows what they're doing and doesn't completely suck with the deck, which some people do. Uh, but you can't really uh, bank on that for your win condition. So you need at least some form of tall removal. And in the other list, I actually have a second tall removal, uh, but we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, Regis Bloodlust, it's a pretty good card. Uh, full test is still a very good deck, high tier two, possibly tier one. Um, it'll surprise you. You'll you'll still lose to full test a lot of times. So the Regis Bloodlust Banish is kind of nice. It is also a vampire which synergizes with the deck, uh, and it's removal. And removal is never bad. Uh, Nagelfar we talked about a little earlier. It helps you hit your gold cards and has synergy with Poet. Uh, Catacan, nice vampire, nice proactive play. Yep, that's about it. Oriana. So this card is insanely good this patch uh just because vampires are actually good and because you run debt laugh you can get lots of bleeds on the board and this card is just a massive engine uh typically you play this and you'll have like three or four bleeds on your opponent's side of the board and it instantly goes to like seven or eight uh it like breaks even on play a lot of the time uh, and it catches people off guard uh, when you play like Detlaf twice and you have like another bleed on the board and you play Oriana, you have four bleeds going on, uh, your opponent typically, a lot of the times they don't do the math because there's a lot of math, right? There's like four bleed ticks on your opponent's side of the board and you're getting plus four a turn on Oriana until you start losing bleed ticks. And that's just really good. Plus four a turn plus bleed ticks. You're, you're looking at like six, six to eight points a turn every turn for the next like two to three turn. That's nuts. Uh, this card just really good. Really, really good. Auto include in every vampire deck. Phenomenal card. Proto Flutter. Um, it's a solid card. It's a 10 for 9. It's not too hard to get dominance with this deck. Uh, I will say there is an option to replace it. You can replace it with Azrael. Uh, the reason to run Azrael is because it's a stronger finisher in round 3 with uh, Old Spear Tip and the Goliath, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, it's also very good against uh, Skellige. 
because, well, they play big cards. They have Olaf for 8, and they have Champion at 12. So if you're seeing a lot of SK, I would honestly say drop the Proto Flutter for Azrael. Me, personally, I'm not seeing a lot of SK right now, so I don't feel the, the need to run Azrael. The other issue I have with Azrael is it's not really a playable card in round 1 or 2, uh, just because you typically don't play Spear Tip or Goliath in round 1. And you play them maybe in round two, but they're usually not dead. So it's kind of a brick. And if you're wanting to bleed all in, uh, Azrael is not really the type of card that you want. So I, I've cut him, but he's definitely a good card uh, if you're seeing SK. Uh, Goliath, nice, strong play. Uh, if you're against Hyperthin, be very careful with this card. You do not want to play it early. Uh, you can play it early in round one or two, but in round three, you cannot be playing this. Uh, you need to save it for final card. The reason being is, well, Vogel Force is their final play and they sack one of their low units. Well, this summons Tibor, so yeah, they could just play this. Or if you play this in round three, they can Vogel Force it and pull their Tibor out, which effectively makes this not even, it makes it a zero but it's less than zero because they don't have to sack one of their one, two, or three. So it's like a negative one, two, or three against uh, Hyperthin. So just be careful. Uh, however, you could use it in your favor and play it in round one or two. And if they kill it, it'll rip Spear Tip out and you slam Heat Wave on it and you win the game. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Uh, you can run that combo if you draw both of the two cards uh, against Hyperthin early on. Queen of the Night. It's a nice power play. It's a 9 for 7. Has bleed. Has vampire. Just a nice synergistic card with the deck. Gael got a nice buff. Uh, before it was just damage 1. And then death blow. You boost by its uh, base strength if you killed it. Uh, now you can do 3 damage. So you can kind of use this like an execute with death laugh. Uh, if your opponent plays like a 4. I'll play death laugh. Wait a turn. And then play Gael. Which is really nice. Sometimes your opponent will play like a 3 point engine. And you just want to remove it. In which case you can death laugh into Gael. Not terrible. Uh, ideally, you would like to play it on a 5, right? So your opponent plays a 5, you play Detlaf, it goes down to 4, it goes down to 3, and at 3 still has 1 bleed tick, and you throw this on it, and then it gets the 3 damage, plus the 4 body, plus the 5 point uh, boost, which is quite nice. Pretty big swing. Uh, it's technically not a 12, just because uh, you lo are losing out on 1 bleed tick, so it's like an 11, but 11 for 7 is... Pretty good. Uh, Parasite, good removal. Thunder, good removal. Uh, Necrot. This card's really, really strong. Um, this is actually one of the few decks in the game where I like losing coin flip. Uh, because this is a strong enough card that you just slam it on the board. You tactical advantage it. And it stays on the board the rest of the game. Uh, you basically get two points every turn for like the next five turns because you run a ton of vampires. This card's phenomenal. It's one of the best engines in the game. Uh, nobody runs movement. Uh, Squatel doesn't run Dragoons right now because it just doesn't fit. They don't want to run it. Um, this card is just amazing. Fantastic card. Uh, yeah, you're going to see a lot of this card. Great card. Uh, Necker Warrior. Probably the worst card in the deck. Uh, I don't really have a better option uh, other than maybe Neckers, but Neckers feel kind of awkward in some matchups, so I just went with the Necker Warriors. Uh, you can swap them out if you don't like them. It's really up to you. Guard Kane, fantastic card, especially uh, with Neckerat. Um, it's just a really powerful engine. You play it, it starts at 5 because you either have Leader or Neckerat or any of your other bleed cards. Uh, and it just gets plus 1 every turn for the rest of the game. I had a game where this went up to 10. Yeah, 10 for 4. Pretty good. Great card. Uh, Plumard, great card. It's a vampire, has bleeding. Yep, basically if a card has the word bleeding on it or vampire... It is in this deck. Basically how it works because this deck has high synergy with both of those tags. Cutthroat. It has bleeding on it, which means it makes the cut. Uh, Bruxa. It has vampire and it has bleeding and it has thrive. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. So phenomenal deck. I love it. It's so much fun. Uh, it's probably the most fun I've had with monsters in... Well, probably all of Homecoming, actually, for the last, I don't, however many months Homecoming has been out. It's a really fun deck. Um, once again, the Spear Tip, I'll, I'll go ahead and show the other variant of this list uh, while I'm at it. Basically, the main changes are I run Professional instead of uh, Spear Tip. That's basically the only change. Uh, there's a Bork in here because, uh, I mean, if you watched my previous video, uh, I really like Bork. I love the card, or Villain Treader Mirth, um, Bork 3 Jack does. Uh, it's a good card in this meta. If you don't like it, you don't have to play it. It's really up to you. If you need to replace it, you can play Keltless. I will say, 
Playing Calculus is a little awkward just because, yeah, it's... No, don't play... The, don't actually play this card. Um, I, I thought this card would be auto-include, but it makes for some really awkward scenarios. It's really good against Northern Realms, but against other decks, they can typically kill it. Uh, if you like the card, you can go ahead and play it anyways. Um, Telekinesis is actually... Eh, I mean, it's an extra Thunder. Is that worth it? Eh, maybe. Um... Yeah, so if you don't like uh, Villain Treader Mirth, you can play Erden. Erden's pretty good in this meta, I think. The resets are nice. Granted, it's probably overkill against uh, Nilfgaard just because you have Heatwave and Professional, which are both tall removal. So probably don't play Professionals. Um, oh, I know. Just play Crones. Yeah, if, if you really don't like Villain Treader Mirth, you can play Crones. Drop the Villain Treader Mirth. Drop, like, the Thunder and drop maybe the Proto. Play Crones. I personally am not a huge fan of Crones. I tried a variant of this deck with Crones, and I kind of hate it just because if you don't draw Brewis, the other Crones kind of suck, uh, and there's really no consume targets in this deck for Brewis, so Brewis is just a 6 for 8, which is not great. And my my biggest issue with Crones, they're too draw-oriented, and if you don't draw them, they suck, right? If you draw one Crone, it's like a 7 for 8. 7 for 8 is terrible now. Um, these cards kind of get power crept. There's no reason to play these cards. It's just, like, the only reason these cards still play is because there was nothing better. Well, the vampires are insane now. These golds right here are all better than these. So there's really just no reason to play Kron. I don't like them. You can play them if you want, but I'm not a huge fan. I'm not sold, um, but that is up to you. So the Bork is flex. Play whatever you want. Uh, or just try Bork because he's a really fun card. Uh, this deck doesn't really have any tall card other than... Uh, Proto Flatter and Gale. Uh, so you just play Villain Treader Mirth early. It's not too difficult. Um, so, uh, yeah, the bottom of the list is actually identical to the previous one. So you can choose whichever one you want. Uh, this one's a little bit more control control oriented. It'll do better against Hyper Thin Nilfgaard uh, because you have two tall removal and you don't play Spear Tip, which will give him a free invocation. If you're seeing more, say, Scoyatel, uh, the other list is going to be better because the Spear Tip Point Slam is going to be very good. Uh, if you're seeing Northern Realms, the other list is going to be better. Basically, if you're seeing Hyper Thin Nilfgaard, you want to play this variant. You win every game. Double Tall Removal destroys them. Um, if you're seeing Squayatel, Northern Realms... Yeah, Squayatel, Northern Realms. Uh, I, maybe even Mirrors. Maybe this list is... Or the other list is better. Um... I think this list is the best, just because you, there's going to be a lot of Hyper Thin Nilfgaard, and the punish on Spear Tip is so severe that it's just not worth it. Uh, and even Northern Realms is running Vincent, which kind of hurts your Spear Tip. So this is probably the better list of the two, uh, but the other list is good if you don't want to play um, Professional or Villain Shred and Mirth. So I'll let you guys choose which one you guys want. Uh, I'll have videos of both. Um, maybe one of the videos doesn't have Villain Shred and Mirth. I'm not sure. I've played a lot of different variants of Vampires, but these are the two that I like the most. So... Uh, yeah, I, I kind of rambled a little bit. I hope you guys enjoy the lists and the gameplay, and I'll see you guys on the next one. You like the wholesome art change? Yeah, it's fine. I don't mind it. It pleased a bunch of people, so... If you believe in anything, There's only one downside of CDPR making that change. It now means that what Reddit did worked. Which means lots of complaining and... Might actually get the job done. So... I might want to be careful with that, but yeah. Good hand. Alright, well, I don't... This is going to be hard. We have one tall removal, so we have to hold on to this. There's like posts about telling people to not stop complaining since it works. Yeah, I mean, yeah, not surprising. How badly do I want to kill this? Not that badly.
Can you kill your own Goliath to break his combo? I can, yeah, but I don't really have any consume, I don't think. Do I have any consume? No, I don't play crone. Okay. Maybe Azrael? Yeah, maybe. Azrael doesn't sound that bad. Yeah, I could play Ozzy. Isn't CC better than Heatwave? Nah, CC blows. What is truth? It doesn't do anything well. Especially playing it on stream is a recipe for disaster. Well, it happened. You ran Imperial Golem? Now his only win con is win on even, which could happen. It's a different trap. Not actually enough, is it? <laughs> right, because he takes two and I get plus two on this. It's a tie. I guess I don't mind using leader tick. Sykeon, thank you so much for the nine months. Welcome back. All right. This is fine. He has one engine on the board. I have like two and I have bleed ticks going and I'm willing to play all my cards. I guess I could have just committed the poet there. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that was a better play. You crossed the wrong sorceress. It's actually one of his higher cards in the deck. This is where three, four, plus four is eight, plus two is ten, right? I believe so. Four bleed ticks, five bleed ticks, five plus the three bodies, eight plus two ticks on Garcane. Ten puts me at thirty-eight. Seems good. Any issues with Gwent Observer? Not that anybody's told me no. How does Poet fit in the deck? It's extra tempo if you need it, but on top of it, it works really well with Naglefar because it puts the other gold on top. So when you play Poet, you guarantee draw that gold, um, which is good. And he might not be good, but I just want to try him because he got buffed. Trying new cards that got buffed is always a good thing to do. You think next Challenger will be as good as the beta ones? I think this challenger is going to be one of the better ones. Might even be the best. The reason being is, one, there is spectator mode, which is huge, which means 
Uh, anybody who does not know every single Gwent card now will be able to look. You'll be able to look at decks, which is going to be great. Um, and uh, the top players who are going to be competing in it have, what, two weeks to find out the best list, which is why a lot of the top players are going to be spamming Detlaf because they want to find out the best variant because Detlaf will see play at the Challenger. He's a very good leader. Vampires are AQ Glusty. Vampires are much stronger, period. He can offensive Vilki, but he'll overthin. Uh, actually, no, he won't. He'll thin to zero. Quite the mean task. You really want to be thinning that out of your deck? It's like the best card left in your deck. Hi, Pumpkin. It's been a while. I'm eating a brownie and I'm happy. Have a good stream. <laughs> Thanks, man. They can pass, right? Plus one, minus one, two. This card is so good. What does Vilgi do now? Same thing as before, but he's five strength from four. Oriana is... I mean, Oriana was good before. It's just bleed mechanics were bad. Now the bleed mechanics are good. And there's actual synergy. Oriana is, like, one of the better golds in the game. We can hit Regis. We won't miss. Oh, we missed. We didn't really miss, though. It's not crazy on other leaders? Yeah, okay, sure. But that's like saying Wild Carl isn't good in a Crocless. Like, yeah, okay, it's not a good card, but in a Trial Bloodless, he's very good. He's a 12 for 9. Nothing can beat Life Coach coming back from a 36 point Gigney. Yes. I still remember when. Uh, we can wait a turn on this. Actually, no, let's just do this. I still remember, I forget the, the matchup, but somebody was playing uh, Consume and beat Nilfgaard, even though the Nilfgaard player played Swears twice. I still don't even know how that's possible. Let's see what we're working with. It was Neo. Please play Syndicate Cleaver. Why? It's terrible. It was only playable in one way, Shoop, and they killed it, so there's no reason to play it. That's not bad. Actually pretty good. Do you get daily crowns when you play arena? I think so, but I can't confirm it because I haven't played an arena in a while. So somebody else can confirm that. Why poet? Because it pulls uh, Nagelfar and I just want to try it and it's a good tempo card. A lot of different reasons. Is Dandelion auto include? I don't think so, no. But I just want to give him a try because he was a fun card back in the day, and maybe he's good. And the only way to find out if a card is good is to try him. So we're trying him. Ah, oh, there 
is no other way. <laughs> Please link the song. You should have killed me when you had the chance. With each move, you make my task easier. Excellent. Yesterday I lost three twenty-five percenters in a row off of Roderick. Yeah, it feels good, right? Feels like shit. Is there a refined vampire list? I don't think so, no. That'll take a while. <laughs> so much Ebola. Necker carry, yeah, they're pretty good. I don't know. I I added them instead of the Necker warriors, and then I regretted it because I queued into SK, and SK kills them really easily. So like, I don't know. Back and forth on the card, it can be very good in certain matchups. It can also just be really bad. You don't really want to play a two. Two. Worst card, I think. Who's better leader for Hyperthin? Uh, Calvi, because you can invo. Invo is a uh, very good card. No reason not to play it. How many provisions is that laugh? 16, I think. Oh, 15. Oh, we drew all our golds. It's nice. Cool guys. Somebody call a doctor. Mate, you, you put it on the wrong row. You gotta copy my plays, mate. Come on. Come on, lad. Get with it. Chop, chop. Now you para the catacan. Where's your Crimson Curse? Not a good card. Heat Wave is a good card now? Yeah, it's not bad. A nice flexible remove any threat summoning circle tall cards champion big super big cards and hyper thin nilf card lots of flexibility it's a good card why would you kill catacan it's not like you have things with base power over six ah uh, there's a few but i don't know there's not going to be a better target 
his engines like Oriana, we're just gonna be killing with Prower Heat Wave. So I don't want to boost my cards. It plays into tall removal. Isn't three tall removals overkill? Well, Bork, you typically play in round one. I see, he sees. Mm Song wink. It's called Who Will Save Us Now? I'll just link it. It doesn't matter how big this gets because he's going to be running removal too. So I don't need to get greedy and dell off this. Hey, one problem with this, if he's running the exact net deck, it means he has professional and this Bork will never live. Yeah, or that. Birthday boy Spyro is here. Happy birthday, Spyro. Happy birthday. Poggers. Sorry, I'm watching on phone. Can I have deck list? Maybe. There's my 12. And last words. Is your playlist private? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is private. My playlist. My special playlist for Pumpkin and only Pumpkin. This might be my desert or my heat wave. Asking me for help. He's literally playing the same deck card for card. <laughs> Big boy. Playing the old variant. Boopity. Oh, it's my legion. All right, let's see what river deck you came up with. Nothing like a dwarf to get you out of a tight spot. You think he plays archers? We'll keep him. See if he has it. We didn't draw any bleed. What's the heat wave for? It's just a good card. Nice flex removal.
Is there any way for you to hear your opinion on a deck that you build? Yeah, you just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you send me the deck list and I look at it. You like Uni Cairo in this meta? No. Peace with humans, abide the ask. Be not afraid. This will only hurt a bit. Uni Cairo combo is still good. No, it's not. He sounded like a demon. What, clearing my throat? Okay. The Vesh Bandos are from Hens. He plays defenders. I played against him three days ago. He plays that into a defender. It's kind of cheeky. Guys, he's drinking zero alcohol vodka. What on earth is that? Water? Watching you from a hospital right now. I hope you feel better, man. Why not showing Squatel decks? Because you guys get bored of them. If I do a Squatel deck, it's Squatel Resident Sleeper. Let's get this going. One more feather, and we're done. You should move it. Do you think that laugh will be in Challenger? Yep. I'd be very surprised if it was not.
We're going to see Squatal, Monsters, and Nilfgaard. Those are the three best decks right now. Or factions, I should say. Alright, this is a portal deck. Nani. He runs Crushing Trap. I'm not going to Nithril that. SK? Yeah, you'll see SK. Basically everything but Syndicate. Nobody will bring Syndicate unless there's some insanely good de deck that nobody knows about. Maybe there's a good Fire Sworn deck. Maybe. Yeah, never know. Does the bleed go off or this go off? It's left to right, so, well, this should go off, right? I think it's left to right from my perspective. I should probably know this. <laughs> okay. Bleed goes before traps. Good to know. Yeah. 